Hello, I'm Scott Morris with the Solid Waste Department, and our department helps other departments within the city get ready for their CDL tests. We understand that the walk around portion of the CDL test can be intimidating and difficult, so hopefully the following video will really help make this process easier. Thanks for watching. The walk around inspection of your vehicle uh, starts as you approach your vehicle. You want to look for flat tires, broken windows, uh, obvious leaks, anything that you can see is obviously wrong with the vehicle as you approach it. The first step in your uh, walk around inspection is going to be to inspect the front of your vehicle, your bumper. You want to check your hoses for cracks, leaks, excessive wear or abrasion. Check your filters and your pumps. Make sure they're securely attached to the vehicle, not dented, not broken. You want to inspect your hood, make sure it's securely latched. The latches are not broken, hood's not broken. And you want to look at your grill, make sure it's securely attached, make sure there's no missing bolts, it's not cracked, dented, and is in good repair. And as you move around to open your hood latch, you want to check your headlights and your turn signals, make sure they're clean, clear, not broken, no cracks. Now we're gonna unlatch our hood and open our hood. Uh, we're gonna start the engine compartment. You wanna check your coolant level. You can see the coolant in the sight glass, so you know that's good. Check your hoses, no cracks, no frays, no cuts not leaking on this specific side of your vehicle you have your alternator that's one of the major components under the hood so you want to touch the alternator explain that's the alternator this is a belt driven alternator so you want to check your belt no cracks no frays no more than a half inch to three quarters of inch of play in that belt you want to inspect your water pump ensure it's securely attached no leaks Check your belt, make sure there's no more than three quarters of an inch play in it. While you're here, you can look up, check the passenger side side of your windshield, make sure it's clean, uh, no cracks. Check your windshield wiper blade, make sure it's serviceable and in place. And we're gonna come around to the driver's side of your vehicle here. Okay, one of the other major engine components over here that you want to check is your air compressor. This is a gear-driven air compressor, so there's no belt you have to check on it. You just want to listen, make sure you don't hear any uh, leaks. Check your lines, make sure that there's no air leaks in those. Then your other major component is going to be your steering gearbox. You want to make sure it's securely attached to the vehicle. You want to make sure it's not dented. You want to make sure your hose leading from the power steering reservoir to your steering box is not cracked, not leaking, doesn't show excessive wear. You want to check your steering knuckle, make sure it's securely attached to the vehicle and your steering line. Then you're going to check your power steering fluid, make sure it's at the proper operating level. You also want to check your engine oil. You're going to check all of your hoses for no cuts, no rips, no tears, no excessive wearing. You want to inspect your wiring, make sure it's protected from the heat and away from any moving parts. Then you're going to come down and you're going to inspect your frame rail. No dents, no illegal wells, no excessive rust. You want to check your shock absorber, make sure it's securely attached to your vehicle. It's not leaking. Uh, you want to come down, you're going to check your leaf spring assembly. You want to check where it's mounted to the vehicle. Make sure it's secure, the nuts in place. Uh, you want to check the springs to make sure they're not cracked, they're not welded, they're not scissoring. You want to check your U-bolts to make sure they're in place. They're securely attached. The rubber between your spring and your U-bolt, make sure it's there, it's not torn or excessively worn. Then you're gonna come over and you're gonna check your braking system, which starts here with your air chamber, 
You want to listen, make sure you don't hear any audible air leaks. You want to check your hose, no cuts. Make sure it's not frayed or excessively worn. You want to check your slack adjuster on the front. Uh, make sure that does not have more than one inch of play in the slack adjuster. Uh, you want to check your brake linings. Make sure they're not excessively thin and don't show any signs of overheating such as glazing. You want to check the inside of the rim of your tire. No illegal wells, no dents. Then you're going to check the tire itself. You want to make sure there's no bulges, there's no gouges, there's no leaks. You'll check the air pressure in it with either a tire gauge or a mallet. Check your tread depth. On the front tires, it has to be no less than 4 30 seconds of an inch. In the rear, no less than 2 30 seconds of an inch. And on the front tires, you cannot have any uh, recap tires. You're gonna check the outside of your rim to make sure it's not cracked, not illegally welded. You're gonna check your lug nuts. Uh, you're gonna know that they're properly tighten because there's no rust trails below them and there's no shiny threads showing. Then while you're over here, you're gonna check your driver's side windshield, no cracks, make sure it's clean, make sure it's serviceable, uh, and check your windshield wiper. Make sure it's there, proper, uh, and operational. And so now you can go ahead and close your hood. Now we're going to continue with the driver's side of the vehicle. You want to check your mirrors, make sure they're securely attached to your vehicle, make sure they're clean and you can see out of them. You want to check your steps to make sure they're securely mounted to the vehicle as well as your uh, handrail. Um, you're going to open your door, make sure it opens and closes. While you're here, you have a view of your batteries. You want to make sure that you check your battery cables. No exposed wires, not frayed. They're securely attached to your battery. You want to inspect your battery for leaks and corrosion. None of that should be present. Then you want to make sure your door closes properly. Uh, you're going to move to the back of your cab. Check the back to make sure it's not rusted. There's no leaks back here. You want to check your back window to make sure it's not cracked uh, and clean. You can see through it. You're gonna check your clearance lights over here. Uh, clearance lights are amber on the sides, red to the rear. You wanna check your frame rail to make sure it's not cracked, broken, not illegally welded. You're gonna check your hoses that come back through here, make sure they're not cracked, uh, leaking, no excessive welds. Your air tank system is here. So you want to listen to make sure you're not hearing any leaks of air. You want to check your hoses to make sure they're not worn, cut, uh, excessively worn. Then you're going to check your drivetrain. Make sure it's securely attached to your vehicle. It's not dented, not broken, uh, no illegal welds. Check all your wiring. Make sure there's no exposed wires back there. Uh, you want to check your tank to make sure it's not leaking, no excessive rust, anything on your vehicle. You want to make sure it's securely attached. You want to make sure the caps are tight if it has them. You can check your ladder, make sure it's securely attached to the vehicle. Then you're going to start checking your rear of your vehicle, your rear suspension and brakes. You're going to start with your leaf springs. Make sure they're securely mounted up here to the vehicle. Here again, you want to make sure that these are not cracked, not broken. They're not illegally welded. Make sure they're properly aligned, not scissoring. You want to check your U-bolts to make sure they're there, they're attached, um, they're secure. You want to check the uh, rubber between your leaf spring and your U-bolt to make sure it's there. It's not cracked, excessively worn. Um, then you're going to check your air chamber on your brakes. You're going to be listening to make sure you're not hearing an air leak. You want to check your air hoses, make sure they're not cracked, cut, frayed, uh, excessively worn. 
Then you want to check your brake linings to make sure that they're there. They are not excessively worn, that they don't show uh, excessive signs of heat, such as glazing. You want to check the backside of your tire, no bulges, no bumps, no chunks missing, uh, no excessive cracking due to weathering. You want to check the backside of your rim, make sure it's not cracked, illegally welded. You're going to check your tire depth here again on the rear tire, no less than two thirty seconds of an inch. You're going to want to inspect the space between your dual rear wheels, make sure they're free of rocks and debris and make sure they're uh, tightly mounted to each other. You want to check the front of your tire, no bulges, no gouges, no excessive wearing. Uh, then you're going to check your front tire, the back side of it, tread depth, the front side of it, same thing. You want to check your lug nuts, make sure there's no shiny threads, make sure there's no rust trails. Uh, from those here again check your inflation on these with a mallet or a tire gauge and This inspection of the suspension and the brakes is the same For the front and rear driver side as it will be for the front and rear passenger side We're gonna move on to the rear of the vehicle you want to check here again your marker lights we're at the rear of the vehicle now, so these are going to be red. Uh, check your reflectors, check your mud flaps, make sure your mud flaps are there, they're not torn, they're serviceable. You want to check everything attached to your vehicle to make sure it's secure. Check the back of your tank, make sure it's not cracked, no illegal welds, no excessive rust. Make sure your tag's present, your tag light's present. Here again, you have a clearance light here, needs to be red. Your tail lights, your backup beepers, your tail lights need to be clean and visible and have the covers, no cracks. Same way with your marker light here and everything on the back of your vehicle. Gonna check your pump, make sure it's securely attached. Check your tail light, not cracked, not broken. Make sure you have an amber marker light on this side. At this point, you would normally check your drop-down DOT bumper. This vehicle is not equipped with it, but if your vehicle is equipped, check your DOT bumper, make sure it's securely attached, uh, not broken, no illegal welds, and not cracked in good working condition. Then we're gonna move to our passenger side of our vehicle. You're gonna check anything that's attached to your vehicle again, make sure it's securely mounted, make sure your mud flaps here, your suspension and your brakes and your tires are gonna be the exact same on this side as we did on the other side. Uh, you wanna make sure your tank is not cracked, not excessively rusted, there's no leaks, there's no illegal welds in your tank. Um, you wanna check your frame rail, make sure it's not cracked, uh, excessively rusted, make sure there's no illegal welds on it. You want to check the back side of your cab here to make sure it's not rusted, no leaks. The wiring that you see over here, no exposed wires. Check your back window, make sure it's clean. You can see through it, no cracks. You want to check your muffler, make sure it's securely attached to the vehicle. It has no holes, no leaks. You're going to inspect your fuel tank. Make sure your fuel cap is securely attached. Check your strap that holds your fuel tank on. Make sure it's not cracked, broken, no illegal welds, and is securely attached. Then you want to check your steps. Make sure they're securely attached to your vehicle. You want to check your handrail. Make sure it's securely attached. Mirrors need to be securely attached, clean, serviceable. Windows are clean. You can see out of those, they're not cracked. Um, if you open the door on this side, you'll see your windshield wiper fluid reservoir. That's where you check the level of it. Make sure you've got uh, windshield washer fluid. Inspect the second strap for your fuel tank. Again, make sure it's tight. No excessive rust, not worn, no welds. Now we're gonna transition to the inside part of our, our end cap test.
All right, once you enter the cab of your vehicle, um, you can point out the obvious stuff you need to. You have a fire extinguisher here that's fully charged, securely mounted in the vehicle. Behind the passenger seat, you have a set of emergency triangles uh, should you need them. You wanna make sure you tell the inspector that you know this is fully charged, you know the triangles are there because you put them there this morning when you got in your vehicle. You're gonna have extra fuses in your center console here for the vehicle. You're gonna have your insurance verification for your vehicle in that center console. You wanna test your horn, test your seat belt to make sure it is not sticking and uh, slides freely. You also want to check your pedals, make sure they're not sticking, and make sure your shifter moves around freely. You want to have a timing device with you at this time, uh, whether it be your cell phone with a timer, but you're responsible for bringing your own timer. The instructor will not time your test for you. Um, and then at that point, you want to start your engine. Uh, you start your brake test with a uh, full tank of air, so you're going to have to start your engine, let your air pressure build up. Once you turn your key on, you can check the gauges in this vehicle because you turn your key on, the gauges go through a sequence where they will max out, then move back to zero. Then as you start the vehicle, your gauges will show your proper oil pressure, fuel level, all of that. Once you do that, you want to check your windshield wiper and your wiper fluid to make sure that they work and that you have windshield washer fluid. You want to check your heater and air conditioner uh, by turning it on, make sure the fan comes on, make sure it's operational. Once your air pressure has gotten to max, you want to go ahead and turn your vehicle off, but you want to turn your key switch back to the on position very important that you turn it back to the on position because your low pressure indicator will not sound if you do not have electrical power to it. So turn the vehicle off, then you turn your key back on. At that point, you're ready to start your brake tests. Uh, your first test is going to be, um, you want to push your parking brake in. In other words, you're gonna turn it off you're gonna let your air pressure stabilize. Um, once it gets to stabilized, you're gonna time that for one minute. During that one minute time frame, you cannot lose more than two pounds of air pressure to pass that test. Then you're going to apply your foot brake. Once your air pressure gauge has stabilized, then you're gonna start timing for another minute you want to hold the foot brake in in place for one minute. During that time, you can't lose more than three pounds of air pressure to pass that portion of the test. Uh, once that's completed, you're going to move on to your low air warning test. Uh, and basically what that's going to be is you've already got your foot on the brake. Once you've ensured you haven't lost more than three pounds, then you want to start feathering the foot brake. And by feathering, we mean just pumping the foot brake rapidly in and out. As you do that, you're going to watch the pressure, your air pressure gauge drop. When the air pressure gets between 60 and 75 pounds of pressure, your low warning light indicator is going to light up on your dash and the buzzer is going to sound. Uh, you want to ensure that that happens because if not, then you have a problem with your braking system. Once that happens, you're going to move on to your next braking test and that's going to be your spring brake, emergency brake test. You are going to continue to feather the brake pedal down uh, and between 45 and 20 pounds of pressure your emergency brake will then pop back out. And as long as you pop back out, you've passed that test and your brake system is operational. At that point, ensure that your parking brake is engaged and that your vehicle's in neutral. Then you're gonna restart the vehicle. Your next test is you're gonna let the air pressure build up, which takes a little while, but you're gonna let it build up. 
to 80 pounds of pressure. Once it gets to 80 pounds of pressure, here again, you want to use your timing device. Once it hit 80 pounds, you want to time it, the time that it takes it to build between 80 pounds and 100 pounds, it should do that within 45 seconds. Um, this particular truck does it in about 27 seconds. But as long as you're within the 45 seconds, that passes. From there, you're gonna allow the gauge to keep building until the pressure maxes out, which is between 120 and 130 pounds of pressure. And at that point, you'll hear your compressor You'll hear the governor kick in and it turns your compressor off. That is your governor test, so that passes. From there, you're gonna move into your actual moving park brake test. Um, you're gonna ensure the park brake still pulled out, set, and as you, uh, then you're gonna put the vehicle in gear. Slowly let out under your clutch very lightly on the gas what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to pull against that park brake to ensure that it holds the vehicle in place when it's set once that's done then you want to turn the park brake off and you're going to do your last in cap test which is your foot brake test in order to do that you're going to put the vehicle in gear keep your hands above the steering wheel let out on your clutch let the vehicle move forward uh, until you reach approximately five miles an hour. And when you do that without touching the wheel, you're gonna apply, firmly apply your foot brake. You wanna make sure that the brake stops you and you wanna make sure that um, your steering wheel does not turn more than 10%, which is two inches on a 20 inch diameter wheel. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to test all of your turn signals, your emergency flashers, uh, your headlights, tail lights, and your DOT examiner will help you perform that test. Once that's done, uh, you can then look at your instructor and the evaluator and say, this concludes my walk around inspection.